ghosts, demons, shadow people, unsolved mysteries, unexplained phenomena, monsters, and more. True stories of the paranormal and supernatural. I'm Darren Marlar, the creator and host of Weird Darkness, where I bring you the dark, creepy, and macabre. You can even tell me your own stories for use in future episodes. Get the podcast today for Apple, Android, or your favorite podcasting app at WeirdDarkness.com. This podcast is part of the BombPod Media Network. From DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com, I'm Darren Marlar, and this is your Daily Dose of Weird News. Two Delta passengers got a little, uh, frisky in their seats during a recent flight from L.A. to Detroit. The pair, a 28-year-old man and a 48-year-old woman, were said to be complete strangers before meeting on the airplane. Now, how are they doing anything in those seats? I mean, most flyers, they can barely squeeze their butts into one. Last week, the CIA released 470,000 documents from the house where Osama bin Laden was killed in 2011 in the interest of transparency. Among other items on his computer, Osama had a copy of the National Geographic special Where in the World is Osama Bin Laden? and also a saved YouTube video claiming September 11th was an inside job. Gee, narcissistic much? The study says Alaska is the most sexually diseased state in the nation. Now you can go up there and easily catch more than just salmon. The Bank of England is raising its interest rates for the first time in 10 years ironically lowering interest in the Bank of England. Thanks to AT&T, you may soon be able to build your own AI-powered app. The Acumos AI Marketplace that launched with open-source nonprofit the Linux Foundation is currently open for initial access to companies who pay a registration fee. The platform will be released to the public for free in early 2018. Acumos will provide a platform through which developers can select AI capabilities, such as location tracking and facial recognition, and string them together to create apps. All of that to say your smartphone may soon actually be smart, smarter than you, and possibly take over the world. A poll says 58% of Americans are afraid to discuss their political views. Obviously, none of those people are my Facebook friends. The International Space Station is getting its first new printer in 17 years. Unfortunately, it's a wireless printer and it's really hard to get a decent Wi-Fi signal from Houston up there. Archaeologists have found a previously undiscovered secret chamber in Egypt's Great Pyramid. It has not yet been confirmed whether or not it's the chamber where Apophis was hiding the Stargate. A nomadic American couple and their two young children were found alive three days after they went missing in an attack by river pirates in Brazil. Police say Adam and Emily Harto and their daughters, six-year-old Colette and three-year-old Sierra, were passengers on a ferry from the Amazon gateway city of Belém to Macapa that was attacked by pirates last Sunday. Reportedly, the pirates held the crew and passengers hostage for hours, and there was no sign of the family after the pirates left. The Hardos were rescued Wednesday by a villager who spotted them floating on a piece of driftwood in the river. Miraculously, they were unharmed, save for a few scratches and insect bites. The family was planning to move back to California later this month so the girls could grow up close to relatives and have a little bit of foundation. Now, of course, foundation's the last thing they'll be getting. It'll be replaced with many years in school of being teased about being robbed by Jack Sparrow and being asked if they'll be dressing up as wenches every Halloween. Well, we have the first casualty of the new TV season, the CBS comedy Me, Myself and I, which starred Saturday Night Live's Bobby Moynihan, has been yanked from the Monday lineup after just six episodes. Cancelled. And that show didn't even star Kevin Spacey. No less than 21 State University of New York students are being charged with hazing to a level that is mind-blowing. It seems they used a rental home near the college campus as their house of horrors for fraternity pledges who were vomited on, doused in urine, and forced to eat foods that sickened them. The abuse endured by 10 pledges of Fraternity Pi Alpha Nu is disturbing. The victims told authorities how the fraternity brothers subjected the pledges to repeated paddling on the buttocks and being forced to eat food off the floor. According to court documents, a 19-year-old student told campus police that while being paddled, 
One of the brothers hit me so hard that my knees buckled and I had to be held up. He also said pledges were forced to drink alcohol and other liquids and eat foods that would make them throw up, including condiments, raw sardines, clam juice, and chewing tobacco. Another pledge told authorities that during Hell Week last February, the pledges were made to get down on the floor in a plank position while some frat members vomited on the students and others tossed cups of urine on them. College officials have suspended the fraternity as authorities continue their investigation. Not surprisingly, all the students charged have pleaded not guilty, including a 21-year-old frat president, Evan Florek. So, go ahead, let your son join a fraternity. What could possibly go wrong? Real Housewives star Teresa Giudice called Sofia Vergara a witch with a capital B at a photo shoot, saying she expected her to be nice because she is an immigrant. Are we sure she's a real housewife? I mean, I have a hard time believing anybody this naive and stupid has the word real tacked onto them. According to BabyNameWizard.com, the name Sophia and all its other variants is the most popular name globally, with its topping the list of popular girls' names in eight countries. The site's founder, Laura Wattenberg, assessed data from 48 countries and found that Sophia is currently the most popular name for a baby girl in Mexico, Russia, Chile, Estonia, Slovakia, Argentina, Italy, and Switzerland. Plus, it comes in second or third place in a further 20 regions. Man, who knew Sophia Loren was so influential for today's millennials, huh? In Austria, lampposts have been covered with airbags to stop smartphone zombies from running into them. You know, maybe instead of autonomous cars, we should create autonomous roller skates so we don't have to worry about these brainless bozos bashing their skulls into light poles and wandering into traffic. JFK assassination documents say an informant told the CIA that Adolf Hitler was living in Colombia in the 1950s under the name Adolf Schrittelmeier. Now, if that's true, it's not much of an improvement on the last name. I mean, really, Adolf Schrittelmeier? Really? You might as well go with Burger Meister Meister Burger. American cell phone users are giving two thumbs up to texting over talking. A recent study reveals 83% of adults in the U.S. own a cell phone, 73% text, and 31% of them would rather send and receive written notes than chat. The average adult in the U.S. sends or receives 41.5 messages per day, while those ages 18 to 24 handle 109 daily, which adds up to about 3,200 texts per month. In the Pew Research Center's Internet and American Life Project, 31% of all cell phone users would rather be contacted with a text, 53% say it depends on the situation, and more than half of the heavy texters, those who exchange more than 50 texts a day, would rather receive a written message than a voice cell phone call. Sometimes with a phone conversation you say something that you did not mean to, while with a text you have a chance to pause," points out University of Miami health economist Michael French, who believes new technology and young folks are leading the way to changing forms of communication. Man, and ain't that the truth? I mean, now you have to be able to fluently speak emoji or the under-21 crowd will have no idea what you're saying. A 19-year-old man shot himself while holding up a Chicago hot dog stand. Where did he shoot himself? In the hot dog. Officer Karma on the job. If you ever wanted to smash technology, well, here's your chance. Tom Daly, founder of The Wrecking Club, says Wrecking Club's just a place to get some stress out. It's a place where you can come to, put simply, break a bunch of stuff. Do it online is considered a club. You do that at home, that's considered domestic violence. Tennessee Special Vehicles has revealed what aims to be the first 300-mile-per-hour street-legal production car, the Venom F5, yours for a paltry $1.6 million. So j just keep in mind, though, that because the car is street-legal and can go 300 miles per hour, that does not mean that it is street-legal to drive 300 miles per hour. Once you take speed limits into consideration, a Toyota Prius is just as street-legal. The McRib is back. That's why I have set up my own GoFundMe page. Cities around the United States have been falling over themselves, pitching themselves to Amazon as candidates for its second headquarters. But Little Rock, Arkansas, they took a unique approach. Its response was gracious and clever, but fundamentally different than all the others. 
the Little Rock Regional Chamber, responsible for business development in town, placed a full-page ad in the Jeff Bezos-owned Washington Post styled as a breakup letter, gently explaining to Amazon why it would never work out between them. Quote, in the end, the point of this effort was to position Little Rock as a city ripe for economic development, for business growth as well as an expansion. Unquote. The materials pointed to a new website, lovelittlerock.org. Okay, so they wrote a breakup letter in order to get somebody interested in them. Man, it was no wonder I was single all the way through school. I was doing it wrong. I should have been telling girls I don't want to go out with them so they would become infatuated with me. Get the Daily Dose of Weird News podcast for Apple or Android at dailydoseofweirdnews.com. And please leave a review on iTunes if you like the show. I'm Darren Barler, and I'll see you next time, weirdos.